Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. The time has now come to replace this system. This is a very modern system, but we're putting in some older speaker strobes. So I'm not really sure if it's an upgrade or a downgrade because of course we're going from horn strobes to speaker strobes, which is an upgrade, but we're going from these modern devices to some older devices. So I guess that's a downgrade, but not really sure. You be the judge for now. I guess it's just a grade because it's kind of staying the same in a way, but uh, either way, let's go ahead and get started. All right, these devices are really easy to remove. I just undid the screw at the bottom there. So just remove that. Then here on the bracket, all I have to do is undo these wiring connections, which is also really easy because it's just on the bracket here. So I can do that with the impact and then undo these holes. These are also on keyhole slots, which is very user-friendly. So slide that off. Good to go. Of course, the panel's beeping because we have proper supervision. Not sure if these boxes will do for the uh, speaker strobes. I'll have to see about replacing that. It's always nice when the system planning works out and I don't have to replace boxes. So this device does not need a new box. This back box will be reused for the next test. But um, again, just remove these screws at the bottom. It's the same drill that I used to put it up, except taking it down. Almost like that's how a uh, removal works. I gotta be really careful, especially with these newer devices. I try not to scratch the surface because I like to keep my collection in good condition. But um, so remove these wires very carefully. And then once I remove the wires, I'll also just tighten the screw terminals back down just so that way I don't lose the uh, screws because sometimes if they're too loose, they'll just fall out. All right, so here's the time lapse of the rest of the stuff being removed. All of this Honeywell new stuff is really easy to remove. Here I am just taking off the ceiling stuff. Again, all of this is like plug and play, so you really just have to remove the device and then unwire it. Here in the bathroom, again, the strobe comes down. Nothing much to say about it, same as everything else. This stopper cover, or not even a stopper cover, but this stopper thing with the alarm is so annoying. I just jammed a screwdriver in there to stop it from going off. Um, here in the garage, just taking everything down, including this stopper attachment. At least the stopper has a little you know, switch you can turn off the uh, internal alarm with. The other one doesn't. All right, guys, we've arrived at the final system before I go to college. This is the last time I'm installing fire alarm devices for a while. It's kind of crazy to me that I'm at the doorstep of college now. After all these years exchanging devices, changing stuff out for the monthly system tests, this is it. The next time I change out all of the devices on the system will probably be winter break. Of course, you guys will still have videos because I've been busy working hard making pre-recorded videos. So hopefully you enjoy all of those. But man, in one month's time, I won't be changing out the system. I'll be across the country and doing whatever college kids do. So that's kind of sad. But I guess that's also kind of exciting. Let's go ahead and do this one final system. This month, as you can probably tell, we have a Siemens system. You can get a look at this. As you can see, I have speaker strobes because, of course, we're going to do a speaker strobe system for the final uh, test. As you can see, these are these weird off-center Siemens speaker strobes. They've always been kind of interesting to me. Not really sure why. I don't even know why they're off-center like this. I think it might be because the strobes are so fat that they don't want it to uh, block the grill. So they put it off to the side so the audio is a little better. But either way, they look very distinctive. They look kind of funny. So I have several of these. I have a ceiling speaker and a remote strobe, which is what's going to be going in this room here. Then I have this for the bathroom. This is very interesting. This is uh, an off-center ceiling speaker strobe. I didn't even know that the ceiling ones were like this too, but uh, this is definitely very unique. Of course, we have a mix of pole stations. Two of these plastic ones, these are very common. And then actually some of these interesting RSG rebrands, one of which is double action. Several smoke detectors. These are Cerberus Pyrotronic smoke detectors. Then I have a couple slightly newer versions, but uh, this time we're actually changing out all the detectors because I got to make this special. Let's go ahead and put this system up. All right, so I am actually going to go ahead and disable pull station zones because the pull stations I'm installing all have buttons inside. And sometimes I just like to deal with it and I just uh, hold in the button while I install it, but I'm not feeling that today. And that's just kind of annoying. So went ahead and disabled the zones. All right, here we are installing this new pole station. Nice and simple, conventional pole station. Speaking of conventional, a lot of people have asked me if I'm planning to install the uh, MS-9200, which is that addressable panel I made a video about a couple weeks ago. The answer tentatively is no. I don't think I'll ever replace the SFP-10UD because it's such a good panel. But sometime in the future, maybe I'll use it in a 
you know, as a demo panel, if that makes any sense, just to run some addressable devices. And if I have a, you know, house system in the future, then certainly. I just, right now, it doesn't really make too much sense to install a proprietary system uh, for a demo system like this that gets changed out so frequently, if you know what I mean. Because in a lot of cases, I would have to install like monitor modules and stuff like that to convert the system back to conventional. And at that point, it's basically just a conventional system with more steps. So, And you really can't miss the Siemens key because it's the only square key on my key ring, which is kind of funny. Go ahead and lock this pole station. And there we go. Nice pole station installed. All right, up here, I don't think I have to change out any boxes. This shallow red box will probably fit fine with this device. It might be a bit of a tight squeeze, but uh, it looks like we can make it work. If not, I'll just change it out. But uh, before I do that, I'll at least give this a try. The speaker strobe is wired. As you can see on the speaker side, I have the audio cables connected. The strobe side, we have that connected. Now the challenging part is gonna be fitting this in the box. This actually might not happen because uh, it looks like the way this is designed with the terminals on either side, which by the way, I think is obnoxious because that's just, I mean, why would you do that? Anyways, this is gonna be challenging to fit on the box. Well, I don't know how I did it, but I somehow clutched that up. As you can see, it actually fits on this box. So let me go ahead and tighten down these screws. I'm afraid to let go because I feel like it's just gonna fly off the wall with all that stuff junked back there. Look at that, paint me green and call me a pickle. We actually got that to fit. Check that out, very low profile. Well, there's a completed Siemens or Cerberus Pyrotronics setup. As you can see, the pull station fits perfectly with this red back box that fits perfectly with literally every pull station. But let's go ahead and time-lapse the rest of this installation. And here's the final time-lapse, the last time I have to talk over myself working on the fire alarm system. Man, it's still kind of crazy. I know I've probably spent too much time talking about this now, but uh, here we are putting up the new stuff. Here's that off-center speaker strobe. Fun fact, I replaced the speaker behind this with a true alert speaker. The reason I chose a true alert speaker is because it takes the stro or the same type of strobe plugs, so I could just plug the strobe straight into the uh, terminals that the strobe of the true alert plugged into, and I could use the same terminals on the speaker. The reason I did that is because the speaker on that unit is 70 volts, and generally 25 volt speakers just work way better with this system. I mean, both technically work. It's just that the 25 volt speakers uh, require less power, so they're just a lot louder. Here we are putting up another one of these Cerberus Pyrotronics DI3 smoke detectors. I think that's the model. It's a conventional smoke detector though. And then up here, I'm installing another one of these Siemens smoke detectors. This particular one is model PE11, I believe. It's a conventional unit. It actually looks kind of addressable. I think it's a little bit similar to the uh, FP11 series, if that's what it is. Here I am putting up another one of these off-center speaker strobes. Nice and easy. I like that these things have a small back, so I can fit them on pretty much all the standard back boxes. Here I am installing one of these plastic pull stations. I generally try not to put these surface mounted if I can help it because they don't really fit that well on any standard boxes, but uh, they look fine flush mounted and on surface mount uh, rough boxes, that is the silver ones. Here I am putting up a ceiling speaker. Realistically, I could say that I just wanted to switch up the system and make it more interesting, but uh, honestly, I kind of just ran out of devices, so I needed to do something realistic. This is a speaker that's fairly realistic to the time period, and then I put a remote strobe on the wall, as you saw. So I'm also changing out that smoke detector because I figured I'd go all out, put in all Cerberus, Pyrotronics, and Siemens smoke detectors. Here I am in the garage putting in these final devices. Fun fact, this device here, you might notice, is slightly different in terms of color shade. That's because that's a Wheelock grill and a Siemens strobe. It's kind of a bootleg device I made, but either way, it's effectively the same thing. Here I am putting in the final pull station, and then this is the final device that needs to be installed. And here it is. That right there is a completed Siemens setup. This test was really high effort. As you can see, I put up all Siemens detectors. I really decked out the system as much as I could. But uh, let's go ahead and just take a quick walk around. Siemens everywhere, even the heat detector in the bathroom, as you can see. But the only thing left to do now is to go ahead and test the system. So let's go ahead and activate the pole station in here. All right, 
there we go. As you can see, it looks like we're actually having some sink issues, which is kind of expected because some of these strobes are older. But uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.